Good morning and welcome to St. Charles. I want to give a special welcome to all who are joining us for the first time since the reopening and also to all those who are joining us via our live stream over the internet. Please see our website, www.stcharlesbensalem.org for the latest parish news, copies of the bulletin and worship aid, how to communicate with me and the parish staff, and our reopening mass schedule. The parish website also provides the best way to watch the mass. I would like to just share with everybody a few points about the celebration of the mass that are a little different in this uh, COVID time. There will be no sign of peace. Also, there will be no offertory. If you did not use the collection box on your way in, to drop off your envelope or offering, please use the box in the Guadalupe Chapel or the one by the vestibule on your way out. The only bathroom available for public use is the one in the vestibule. Please wait in the vestibule and not in the waiting area right outside the bathroom if the bathroom is occupied. For Holy Communion, please follow the direction of the ushers for when to enter the communion processional. Those seated in the last pew in each section will be the first in the communion line. One section of the church at a time from the front and the rear of the church will enter the communion line. We'll have a station right here at the entrance to the sanctuary, one at the break. And for those who wish to receive on the tongue, right here in front of the baptismal font. If you do wish to receive on the tongue, we ask you to sit in that section uh, because it'll be easier to go to communion there. Um, the communion line will be one way, so everyone will approach the communion minister by the center aisle and return to your pew by the side aisle. As you approach the communion minister, remove your mask, receive Holy Communion. You present your hands like a throne for the Lord. When the minister places the host on your hand, then you can take the step aside, take the host, place it in your mouth, and then Re replace the mask on your face and continue uh, in the processional. To avoid one person climbing over another in the, in the pews when going to communion or when returning to your seat, everyone who is in a pew uh, that's being shared with a non-household member, everyone is asked to uh, follow the communion line. If you're not going to receive communion today, just bow your head as you approach the minister and keep on walking. Please do your best to maintain social distance within the communion line. There are markers on the floor which mark out six feet of separation. At the end of Mass, we will dismiss the church one pew at a time, starting from the front and the back. Again, please follow the direction of the ushers. Thank you so much for your patience and cooperation.
shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. Thanks. Say to God, oh. Good morning. As we begin our liturgy today, may it be in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ have mercy. Christ Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And now let us give glory to God in the highest. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. According to Matthew, Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, The servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized one of his fellow servants and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord.
wrath and anger are hateful things. Yet the sinner hugs them tightly. And should a person nourish anger against others and, and expect healing from the Lord? Have you ever been upset? Have you ever been angry? Have you ever been livid? Of course you have. Anger, with its many faces and fa facets, is a fact of life. Sometimes, in fact, a very volatile fact of life. Like an emotion, it cannot be denied or suppressed. As emotions go, anger itself is not sinful any more than joy, fear, or happiness would be considered sinful. However, how we deal with anger or fail to deal with anger determines whether our anger results in virtue or vice, whether it ultimately results in something constructive or something destructive. Few of us plan to grow angry. Anger is an intense response or reaction to an injury or injustice, whether actual or perceived. As such, it often catches us off guard, wherein lies the difficulty with this pesty emotion. Precisely because of its spontaneity and its intensity, anger can quickly get the upper hand and even more quickly get out of hand. Anger can become, as it were, an uninvited guest that quickly becomes the master of the house. Francis de Sales observed, once admitted, it is with difficulty for us to drive it out again. It enters a little twig, it enters as a little twig, and in less than no time, it grows big and becomes a beam. Francis de Sales counsels us, it is better to attempt to find a way to live without anger rather than pretend to make a moderate or discreet use of it. As long as reason rules and peaceably exercises chastisements or corrections, people can approve and receive them. However, when accompanied by anger or rage, these same chastisements or corrections are feared rather than loved. And for her part, St. Jane de Chantel suggests, try to calm your passions and live according to sound reason and the holy will of God. It is better to let our anger cool before making an, an important decision or embarking upon some action. Most importantly, anger should not be nourished or fed. And repeatedly indulging in anger can have tragic results for each of us. When we brood over injuries, when we revisit old hurts, and when we hold on to resentments, we cease being people who get angry and we gradually become angry people. And being addicted to anger has been described this way. It is like my drinking poison, but expecting everyone else to die. And while our, our anger may indeed hurt others on the outside, the poison that it produces eventually kills us from the inside. Heed these words from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the inner hug sinner hugs them tightly. And should a person nourish anger against others and expect healing from the Lord? As a stone falls back from the one who throws it, so a blow st struck in anger injures more than one. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then, when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Avoid wallowing in or nourishing anger. Remember, anger is an emotion. 
It is not meant to become a way of life. May God be blessed. We are a community of faith. Okay. And so let us admit, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, earth of all things visible and invisible. And invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. Light and light, true God and true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became my be a man. I believe in the whole God. The Christ is in the death of the Lord. And those that you didn't know Thursday, according to the scriptures. He has sent me to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is so adored and glorified. He has to have been with the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and all the glory of the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy and compassion, we offer our prayers and petitions. For the church, May the Lord bless her and keep her safe from all evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For harmony and justice in our nation and across the world, may the Prince of Peace dwell in the hearts of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For all who are holding on to past hurts and grievances, may the Lord give them the grace to forgive. Let us pray to the Lord. For this family of faith, may the Lord fill us with love and truth and guide us in the ways of wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, especially Joe Giadelli, Patricia Caldwell, and Loretta Arant, that they may receive the healing power of the Holy Spirit and return to health. Let us pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, especially Reverend Anthony Orth, Reverend Albert Santosola, and Betty Lou Cermante, that they may know the loving embrace of our merciful Father, let us pray to the Lord. For an end to the coronavirus pandemic, for the recovery of those who have been sickened, for the protection of the doctors, nurses, and first responders, and all doing life-sustaining work, who put themselves in harm's way to serve others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Father of mercy and compassion, look beyond our sins and hear the prayer we offer you with a contrite and repentant hearts. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of the Lord. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all that compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end, we are clean. saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Son in a death like his 
may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Prayer for Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. During this green phase of reopening, the Archbishop has continued to dispense the faithful from the obligation to attend Sunday Mass, and he will give us several weeks' notice prior to uh, reinstating the obligation for Sundays and Holy Days of Obligation. It is okay for those who are in high-risk categories or those who are concerned that they may pose a risk to members of their household who are at high risk of illness due to the virus to not come to church. Those who are sick or in a high-risk category um, in danger of severe illness with the coronavirus should not come to church at this time. All those who do come are strongly encouraged to wear a face mask or cloth covering while in church. The church is being cleaned according to the CDC guidelines uh, after each uh, celebration. We will continue to live stream the Masses each Sunday and post them on the website, Facebook page, and YouTube channel. We ask for your continued financial support of the parish. 
We are very grateful for the generosity of the many people who have maintained their weekly offering or even have been able to increase their offering at this time. If you have not already done so, please become an online donor using our electronic giving service. It really helps the parish if you do so, even if you continue to give the same amount. Just click on the Sunday Collection icon at the top of our parish website or follow the links that are attached to the posts of this Mass. If you prefer not to give online and you do not attend the Mass, please mail your offering envelope to the rectory or drop it through the mail slot in the front door of the rectory office. No gift is too small and every gift does make a difference. Mass cards and Mass intentions can be arranged by contacting the parish office by phone or email or by mailing in your requests. Please allow a week for those requests to be fulfilled. Walk-in service is not yet available at the parish office. We have Eucharistic Adoration Wednesdays from 7.30 a.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. here in the main church of St. Charles. In the main church at St. Charles, we are able to address the necessary concerns regarding social distancing and sanitation. If you are interested in spending an hour or a half hour with the Lord on a regular basis, please contact the parish office to sign up. All are welcome to just stop by on Wednesday for a visit with the Lord. St. Charles is seeking to hire several part-time sacristans to assist with preparations for weekend liturgies and to ensure a welcoming environment for all who come into church. Saturday afternoon and Sunday shifts are available. High school students and older may apply through the parish office. Parish religious education program prep classes will begin in October and now is the time to register your child. You need to re-register every year. You can, you can register online or in person by calling the rectory and making an appointment for a scheduled time. Next Sunday, PrEP will be holding in-person registration after the 10 a.m. and noon masses in the parking lot near Mary's Grotto. Staff will have registration forms and payments may also be made at that time. Parents of first graders, now is the time to register for level one religious education classes. Check the parish bulletin or website for more details. Any child in grades 8 through 12 who has not received the sacraments, now is the time to register. Classes are being formed for young adults who have not received Holy Communion, Confirmation, or even Baptism. Contact the Parish Faith Formation Office for more information. The Parish Office will be open, is open, uh, during this time, but all Parish business will be conducted by phone or video conference and by appointment only. Parish registrations, baptismal registrations, and letters of eligibility can be arranged by a phone or video appointment with me, Father Furlano. Please call or email the office to arrange an appointment. Thank you for your understanding, patience, and active cooperation with these efforts to protect those who work at St. Charles, as well as the vendors and visitors to our facilities. Thank you to all who have contributed to the annual mission appeal. Um, if you have not already made your donation, there are still uh, special mission appeal envelopes available in the Guadalupe Chapel to make your donation to the missions. Just drop the envelope in the collection box at, the, at Mass or mail the envelope back to the parish office. All are invited to the official reopening of the Fatima Catholic Outreach Center on Sunday, September 27th at 3 p.m. at Our Lady of Fatima. The Outreach Center, now located in the former rectory, will offer English as a second language classes, financial literacy classes, a thrift store for children, and other resources for the community. The center will be staffed by volunteers and supported by Catholic Social Services of the Archdiocese, various grants, and independent fundraising efforts. If you are looking for a way to help build community in Ben Salem, pre please reach out to the Fatima Catholic Outreach Center to the St. Charles Parish Office. We will take up a special collection through the month of September to provide disaster relief to churches in our country needing aid because of the recent hurricanes, storms, and wildfires. Please place your contributions toward this urgent disaster relief effort in the poor boxes next to the candle stands here at the front of the church. 
Donations marked Emergency Disaster Fund can also be mailed to or dropped off at the parish office until the end of the month. Thank you for your generosity towards those in need. If you or anyone you know is interested in becoming Catholic or learning more about the Catholic faith, adult faith formation sessions are forming now. The RCIA, or Rite of Christian Initiation for Adults, addresses the fundamental questions that arise from the human experience while providing an introduction to the Catholic faith for persons inquiring about or desiring to become Catholic. The course may also serve as instruction and formation in the faith for adult Catholics who lack any of the sacraments. The course is less about doctrine or catechism and more about learning to grow in friendship with Jesus through reading of sacred scripture, participation in the mass as a personal encounter with Christ, and a shared journey within the community of the church. Sessions take place Monday evenings from 7 to 8.15 p.m. And at this time, they are be con being conducted via Zoom. If you're interested in journeying with those who have become awakened by an encounter with God or are seeking a way for yourself to be renewed in your own relationship with the Lord and to see him alive in the church, please consider joining the RCIA team. Please see the bulletin for details. Questions or inquiries can be decked directed to me, Father Furlano, or to Deacon Lou Qualia. Our daily Mass at St. Charles is celebrated Monday through Friday at 6.45 a.m., and Saturday morning Mass is at 8 a.m., followed by the Miraculous Medal Novena. Our daily Mass Monday through Thursday and Saturday will continue to be live-streamed on Facebook. Please take your worship aid with you when leaving. Pick up a bulletin on your way out. Please use the collection boxes near the vestibule or the Guadalupe Chapel if you have not already done so on your way in. And feel free to take Blessed Palm that is also available in the back of the church or in the Guadalupe Chapel. Thank you so much for your patience and support and cooperation and have a great week.